welcome to the Fiji Symposium 2019 here in Cairo in Egypt where I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio today by Mr. Harish Natarajan who is the lead for the Payment Systems Development Group for the World Bank. Harish, welcome to the studio. Thank you, thank you for having me here. Now, uh, 1.7 billion people remain unbanked and yet two thirds of them have a mobile phone. I wanted to ask you, what do you think would be the best way to uh, achieve uh, the uh, stimulation of digital financial inclusion? Um, th there is, of course, this is a, a complex um, um, context and it is not um, one single solution which will, um, which will address the problem. So at uh, the, the World Bank we do what is called as a uh, Findex survey um, every, every three years. And that has a question which asks, why is it that you don't have a bank account for the people who don't have a bank account? And it's very uh, illustrative to look at uh, the reasons which come out. Um, and some of the reasons include things like uh, the more obvious ones like I, I don't have enough cash or it's too expensive or some people say I don't need it. Uh, somebody, some member in my family has it. Some people say um, I don't have enough uh, the right documentation to open a bank account. So there are various reasons. So I think uh, um, what, what is important is to really look at why they don't have a bank account. And the top reasons are typically that uh, it's too expensive, I don't have um, enough money in my account. Uh, or they feel they don't have the right documentation with them. Um, so I think any solution, any uh, strategy which uh, we have to take to, to advance financial inclusion has to address those. Uh, and, and digital is a big part of this. Uh, big, digital is a big part of reducing the cost. Uh, mobile phones give you an option for um, lowering the cost of provision of services uh, to the end customer. Uh, and then also, more importantly, also at the agent level. So it is not just the individual with a mobile phone but also the, uh, the agents um, who can be used by banks to expand their uh, banks and non-bank institutions to expand their uh, distribution network. Uh, many of them will just have mobile phones, so they don't have to have specialized equipment and so on. Uh, so mobile phones and digital technology in general are, are a key element of that. And what about the t distinction between smartphones and, and, and feature phones? Um, of, of course, uh, there are certain things you can do uh, with, uh, with smartphone um, you might not be able to do that well um, uh, with, a, with a feature phone. Uh, but in general, uh, the basic technologies of SMS and uh, the USSD, which is available in, uh, in almost uh, all the, I think all the feature phones, uh, is, is adequate to, to provide uh, a reasonable uh, quality of service. Uh, but of course, um, uh, the aspiration should be to move towards um, a better data networks, more uh, universal access to broadband and so on. And that, of course, will improve the quality uh, of, uh, of experience for the individual and what more they could do with that. And how do you see the fintech sector reshaping digital financial services? Um, the, the digital financial services uh, as a term and fintech uh, came at different points in time. Uh, it is, it is uh, very difficult to draw a clear distinction of what is fintech and uh, what was, what's digital financial services. So maybe uh, one way to look at it is um, the digital financial services is an umbrella term, kind of talks about any form of digitization uh, versus uh, fintech, which is more about disruption and uh, more transformative usage of technology. But it's all a continuum and um, it's not a very precise uh, legal term. So um, the, the point is about, uh, when you talk about fintech, is, is about what does it really represent? And it represents um, really innovative use of, uh, of um, existing and in some cases new technologies new business models uh, and uh, new approaches, right? Uh, and uh, this brings in uh, new players um, uh, and then also uh, very different ways of doing traditional processes. So for example, um, mobile money of course is a good example, but uh, this preceded um, by at least seven, eight years, uh, this whole uh, term FinTech uh, when it came into mainstream usage. Uh, but that represents a very good um, uh, kind of um, uh, a sample of what a fintech uh, development could look like in the sense that you are transforming the distribution model, you, you transform the way the service is provided, uh, and you transform the way the cu customer interacts uh, uh, with, the, uh, with the institution which is providing the service. Uh, what, is, what fintech is bringing in new is now uh, all these platform-based models, being able to unbundle uh, various services. So traditionally, um, whenever there was a payment service to be offered, it was tied to a bank account. Uh, and banks were the ones providing various services. Uh, mobile money and all these telecom uh, uh, entities and other non-bank players, when they started offering e-money services, uh, they in, in some sense took away the payment service um, as a standalone activity. And now it is actually going beyond and saying that even though the bank account might be kept to the bank, you might still be able to transact on the bank account 
by using the service of a third party provider. And then similarly it comes to loans and insurance and so on. So I think that's a very different business model and uh, that could um, have a, a dramatic impact on, on digital financial inclusion. There are also technologies like um, artificial intelligence, machine learning, big data, and all of that has some implications. Uh, for example, um, artificial intelligence, machine learning could have a much more effective cus customer um, service kind of interaction. Uh, it could really help in um, also automating a lot of things which uh, banks do in terms of analytics and so on. So it has a transformative impact and it's, it's all part of a continuum. And, and finally, the World Bank is involved in this initiative. There's plenty of initiatives it could be involved in. I just wanted to find out what's specific, what's uh, specifically interesting about this one, what's unique about it. The, the World Bank uh, is, is, is a development institution and uh, we have what we, what we call as the twin goals of uh, ending extreme poverty and boosting shared prosperity. And if you look at it um, um, to end uh, extreme poverty and, and, uh, and also to give more economic opportunities, which is what the boosting um, shared prosperity uh, implies, uh, one needs to have economic opportunities. Uh, and to have economic opportunities, you need to have access to finance to be able to, um, to, be able to um, manage your day-to-day -day transactions and so on, being able to manage your risks um, like, um, like through insurance and so on, and be able to uh, take long-term, make long-term investments for which uh, kind of have access to long-term assets for which you need to have loans and so, so all of this is very closely linked to the um, uh, to the twin goals of the World Bank and that is the reason why uh, we are focusing on uh, on this particular um, uh, um, objective uh, and we have what is called as the Universal Financial Access 2020 objective uh, and, and as part of that there are a series of initiatives and Fiji is one of them. Harish, thank you very much indeed for joining thank us you. in the studio. And we look forward to catching up with you again in the future. Thank you. Uh, I look forward to it. Thank Lovely. you. Cheers. Thank you.